Welcome back to the show. We got to smash some XRP FUD and the XRP price. Oh, watch out, ladies and gentlemen. I think you're going to love it. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.15 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 3%. Bitcoin, $58,400 plus. Ethereum, $2,500 plus. USD Tether, $117 billion plus market cap. USDC is a $34 billion plus market cap. XRP is at number seven spot. We're up 1.4 on the 24 and up 2.3 on the seven day as we sit at 58 cents looking at the range of price between 56 and 59 cents. So we'll keep an eye on it. It's bouncing around a little bit. Look, I want to tell everybody, look, we know that there's a lot going on out here and you haven't heard yet. There's new variants that are running around and it feels like this administration may be trying to push this whole narrative just like what happened back in 2020. And in 2020, we know a lot of us got a shot and it, it caused massive side effects. I'm one of those people that dealt with some of those uh, side effects. Uh, and if you did, you can get spike support right here, which helps reduce and detox your body from spike proteins that you may have gotten from the COVID shot. As well as not only that, you can get it, it's called spike support, but you should also get the medical emergency kit for every family member, not every family member, but every family should have this in their car or home. There's no question, ivermectin, generic z pack and amoxicillin. You need to have this stuff for your family. You know, this isn't a should we get it? Should yes, of course you should. But now we've got it, so you guys can save and get the discount on top of it all. All you got to do is click the link below, get 10% discount, protect yourself and your family, be prepared. We don't know what will happen, but if should they try to start pulling some uh, mandates and all this stuff again, restricting the ability to get a hold of regular medicine that should not be restricted. This is your time now to prepare yourself, so make sure you do it. Take a look at this. The U.S. malls applying fiat reporting mandate on crypto transfers. You know, they keep going round and round. If the government would just do its job on Capitol Hill and put the legislation through, it can't be that hard because Senator Chuck Schumer just told us last week he thinks he can get it done by the end of the year now that he feels like the DNC and his political career are on the line. All of a sudden, he can see a pathway forward. Isn't that, it's amazing, isn't it? Breaking China will unban crypto in coming days following pressure from pro-crypto policies and U.S. election sources. This is how it starts. And we saw Russia just do similar things, too. We know MICA released their regulations. This is getting super exciting because, look, we've got the squeeze play here at home in the U.S. Either the current administration does it, the Harris camp, they either do it right now, or it's going to get done with a new administration. So there's your squeeze play. And look at this coming to Tokyo. Marcus Infanger here from Ripple X. Says he's excited to be speaking on the main stage about real world asset tokenization at WebEx Asia alongside blockchain industry leaders from MasterCard and Bank of Japan. Come on in. Yeah, that's amazing right there. And I love it because there's so many good things happening. Now, here's some fun in play, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this article and shout out to Good Morning Crypto for sharing this and putting the heat out here. Warning, Ripple CBDC play has no direct need for XRP. Now, it's interesting because, uh, shout out to Abs, he did, a, he did a, a survey on this. Does this concern you as an XRP investor? 52% said yes. 52% said yes. Well, let me see if I can help with this because I have something for us here. This is what I want you to see. This is James Wallace explaining central banks partnering with XRP seamless border cross-border payments. So currencies in terms of native cryptos like XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, you know, they're not all the same, right? They're not all created equal. Um, I think what's becoming much more popular in the industry now is 
more sustainable technologies. So the XRP ledger and XRP is, um, there's no mining or proof of, stake of work, proof of work or proof of stake involved. So the, 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 the computational cost of, uh, you know, validating transactions is almost zero, right? Very, very low cost and very stable in terms of, in terms of pricing. Um, stable coins, again, not all created equal. Um, you have a massive range from the algorithmic type stable coins. You know, we all know the Terra story from a few weeks ago. Uh, and then now what we're seeing emerging is, um, you know, stable coins being issued by regulated entities. So. I can't give you the names yet, but there's two projects we're working on, one in the UK and one in the US. Ripple will be one in the US. Working with banks that are regulated um, who will be issuing stable coins and the reserves um, will likely be held at a central bank in a central bank account. So very different from the algorithmic uh, stable coin. You know, we, we as Ripple work across all of these technologies. And then of course, your central bank digital currencies, which uh, essentially is the um, the highest form of digital currency, right? Issued by the central bank, backed by the central bank, the most secure form. Um, as a company who's working across the payment space, you know, we're embracing all of these. We see they will all play their part in the future of, of money. Uh, There's no question about it. Now I want you to hear exactly about James Wallace explaining how the XRP is perceived on the ledger. And excuse me, remember while you're listening to this, Remember when David Schwartz explained that the best incentive is no incentive for the XRP ledger. This is, I believe, is absolutely 1 million percent correct because the best incentive was no incentive for the current main protocols of the Internet we use today. So it must be that you <laughs> have it the same way for the adoption of the value protocols. Only this time, they're going to let us be able to buy a piece of that protocol. And that's what it means to hold the XRP token. And then when listening to this, I want you to listen to how James Wallace explains that the native tokens on the XRP ledger are CBDCs and stable coins. XRP is just there to use it when applicable. And obviously it is a privileged position for XRP to be in because the more you onboard all the different types of tokenized assets onto the ledger or allow it to interface with the decentralized exchange on the XRP ledger, what you're allowing for is more possible pairings on the long tail backside end of all of these different tokenized things of value. And the more you have this depth of market that way and reach in pairs, then you see that XRP can begin to serve a bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper and richer and richer role for the financial system over time. Take a listen. Right, it is, it, we're using the same technology that is with the XRP ledger. What would, the token would be the CBDC, right? So the central bank would actually create their own token, a digital euro, a digital dollar, whatever the, mar the market is. Um, and that becomes the digital asset. The, so that becomes the digital asset. Keep listening. The native um, coin. The native coin, yeah. Now where, where XRP could come into play potentially is when you're looking at cross-border CBDC. So when you have a digital dollar and you have a digital, you know, real, you know, or digital digital pound, you, know, you obviously need to have some some way to interact cross border. Yeah. So I think the uh, BIS call this a multi CBDC model. Um, the, the, uh, one of the ideas is you use a sort of a neutral bridge currency to go from one to the other, similar to the model I explained earlier, where at with our on demand liquidity. Mm. Um, but the, the you know, but the core offering really is is not XRP. There's no XRP involved. It's it's the native token is the CBDC. And that's exactly right, because if you don't allow the elements, the digital dollars and tokenized value instruments to be the native things on the ledger, then you're forcing everyone to use this first. When the reality is, is you only need to have a reserve in your wallet to be able to have access to the network. After that, 
it's game on. So this is why the native assets are really the CBDCs and the stable coins. So they can move freely around the network. This will invite all the world's liquidity to move to this protocol, right? Because once they have a reserve in their wallet, you're on the protocol. You have access. And that is what is required. And it is nothing right now for the world to onboard and have access to that. So this is super exciting to me. But I have something else. Take a listen to this. This is Tyler of Winklevoss explaining exactly what I just shared with you. Shout out to Mike Jansen for this clip. He's going to explain that this time around, just I have said a million times on this channel, the mistake that they made in the birth of the original Internet of Information with TCP IP is that they forgot to make a token so you could buy a piece of the TCP IP. Okay? Or if they made a token for the simple mail translation protocol, which is the, the uh, protocol that allows all the email to run around the world. They forgot to make a token for that too. See, that's what they've done this time. They've made tokens to represent ownership of the protocol. And then you're going to get a little piece of it when it moves around. This is what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Take a quick listen here sort of early in the beginning this is there's going to be a menu of many cryptocurrencies and they're going to rethink the entire internet and how we sort of view it um, you could never buy a piece of the internet back in the 90s you couldn't buy the protocols you could buy you could invest in a VC firm on Santa Road that had to pick Amazon versus pets.com so you had to get lucky you had to be very privileged and get lucky many times to, to get it um, now you can just buy a piece of the protocol so buying Bitcoin is like a call option on the entire Bitcoin ecosystem. A Bitcoin company will not work out before Bitcoin works out itself first. So the ultimate Bitcoin bet is Bitcoin, or the ultimate Ether, Ethereum bet is Ether. And you're ba basically buying a piece of the racetrack. And you're not picking, you know, Seabiscuit. It doesn't matter who wins as long as the races are running. You're, you're a part of it. Um, and that's the beauty here. And usually the retail investors come in at the end. You know, they get dumped this stuff post IPO. Um, you know, 10 years after a company was founded. Now retail has been the ones who have been there first. And here we have it. And we are here first. And we are front running the daylights out of Wall Street. So now let's take a look at price. Shout out to Egg Crypto. Here's an OG right here. XRP to BTC chart. You only live once, man. He says here, we're still at 0 .00010 is a major key resistance that should be flipped into support for bullish continuation. Possible target is 0 .00018570. And here is the actual chart, ladies and gentlemen. And he says here, I'm cautiously optimistic about the XRP to Bitcoin chart. Move unless we close above the mentioned uh, figure there. He says here, back in 2017, we saw a bounce from the You Only Live Once ban, followed by a 45% dip, which turned out to be a life-changing buying opportunity. Now some newbies might ask, so XRP will drop 45%? To them, I say, since you're new, let me explain. It means that Bitcoin might be pumping and making another all-time high, indicating that XRP USD is still stable. XRP Army, stay steady. The next 6 to 12 months could be life-changing time. You know, looking at this, just to let you know I did a conversion on it, it's $10.83 per XRP at that point. And that would be a pretty remarkable, strong start out the gate, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, look, we've seen a lot of bullish things and we see the, you know, God candle explanations and those things could happen too. And that's 11,000 plus 40, 60,000. And look, people get upset about that because they're like, it's not even a dollar yet. I understand that frustration. I do. But I tell you, remember, Bitcoin was sub $1 for a while, too. I remind people that what XRP does really requires legislative clarity from government because it's going to be used inside of the financial system, and it is not a speculative asset.
So that, I believe, is why we're here. That's why the price is low. That's why the XRP FUD, because people don't yet still understand XRP's role in the financial system. Of course, XRP is not the native token to the ledger. CBDCs and stable coins will be, and NFTs. That is the native. These are the products that you want because that will draw the world to it and go, oh, so all I have to have is a reserve for my wallet? You're not going to charge me a whole bunch on every tr tr transaction? No, of course not. You're not going to require me to, to stake this or the other? No, you don't have to do that unless you want to be a market maker. Then you can use the automated market makers. Oh, this is awesome. So now you start to see how all of this can come together. And nobody understands that better than the people in the financial system. That's how I believe we got 1,700 option contracts that nobody wants to talk about. And we never will. Not financial advice to me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.